Today I'm having coffee with Jerome Levenur, who is a material scientist from GNS Science. Thanks for coming on Science on the Napkin, Jerome. You're welcome, Hannah. Could you tell us uh, what is a material scientist? Well, a material scientist is someone that works on the trying to understand and modify the properties of materials in general. Uh, in my case, for example, is trying to understand uh, how to control the properties of surfaces of the materials and try to get them work better uh, for products or during industrial processes. Great! And how are you going to translate that into a drawing today? Well, I'm going to try and see, i uh, show some of the tricks uh, that we can do to the surface to try and make it uh, less uh, prone to microbial contamination or change the way it behaves with water. Mm -hmm. Like it attract water or repel more water and I'll show how we can. I'll try anyway. Surfaces have different ways of interacting with, um, with fluids in general and let's say let's in water. You've seen that when you drop some um, some water on, on, on the table for example, you can see that there is a little droplet here forming one and they've got different um, uh, sphericity, different curves into them. One, this one here is a bit flatter, and this part here is slightly more round here, right? So this, this is basically one way of, of us looking at how a surface can actually is wetting, uh, is wetted by what by water. And so, if I do a, a, a profile of those of those droplets here, you'll get so this is this is my wood surface, and I have uh, one of the droplets is going to be looking like this on the side, while the other one is going to be looking much more flat, much much flatter. Okay, but in my world, what what the difference between those two is that this one is what we say this one here is said more hydrophilic. And this one here is the opposite, it's said more hydrophobic. And this is actually quite important in, in understanding the surface, how a material will behave with liquid and liquids are in many different uh, industrial processes nowadays. So for example, if you want to have a metal that is doesn't want to be wetted, you don't want uh, that the water on it spreads out too much. You really want, you ideally, you'd want to be having a material where you have a droplet that is very nice and spherical around it. The advantage with that is because the surface here is there is much much less area in contact compared to something like here. This droplet here will will actually slide in much easier. Don't interact so much with the, with the material and will be less prone to sticking. Say for example this will be a droplet of milk, in a process you'll, you'll have the milk flowing, flowing there and you will not get uh, tracks, little droplets. Like you see on your windscreens on the car for example, the little droplet that stays on the back. You don't want to have that because as soon as you let the, the milk go too long onto, onto the surface it will start drying and then you'll have to clean it up. So how, we can, how can we make a surface go from uh, hydrophobic to something that is quite uh, hydro, hydrophobic, so that was hydrophilic. Well, then what we do is actually we look at at the surface, but we look at very, we try to modify very, very closely here. So if I do a big, a big, a big zoom into this into this surface here, that's going to be looking something like that on the surface. There is no real, there is very little material that are naturally completely smooth if you look close enough for it. And when I say close enough, if I, put, if I was to put a scale bar here, uh, that would be uh, what we say 100 nanometers. And that's basically uh, a thousandth of uh, the diameter of a human hair. So quite, 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 quite small. And those uh, little ripples at the surface of materials are correlated to how much the, they are how much the surface can be wetted. If it's, if you have very ordered, very well ordered small micrometer patterns on the surface, this is really how you can achieve uh, a very high sphericity, a surface that is very hydrophobic and we call them super hydrophobic. Uh, and that's, that's, that's an effect that's called the lotus, the, the lotus effect where the water actually here, if you put water here on, to, on top of the surface, it won't go to the bottom of the pit here, so there's still some air gap in there. The water here doesn't fall because it's, it's, it's retained 
it's attracted to the rest of the water by, by something that's called surface tension. And this surface tension, for trying to hold the water together, oppose the, 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 the weight of the water that pushes it down. And if, if you tune the, dim the dimensions properly, you can actually get the water to not reach the bottom and, uh, and reach a very nice, super hydrophobic surface. The only other alternative you have to control the surface otherwise is rather than trying to create structure on the surface, you can actually change the composition of it because some um, materials will inherently uh, will have uh, different affinities with water. Uh, for example, since you take a surface here and you'll be you're putting a, a thin layer. This could be your paint. This could be a, 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 a thin a thin film of a thin a, a thin film, and you can think of your. The, 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 teflon pa uh, the teflon pans, they've got a, 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 a coating on the surface to make them less sticky, so that's exactly the same process. In that, in that case, they've got something called teflon, which is uh, the, a plastic or PTFE teflon. So they've, they've, they managed to, to stick it onto the metal surfaces, and that makes it quite unsticky. In my group at Genesense, what we try to do instead is to get the, surf, the material itself to have different properties, because the problem with the with coatings that they can delaminate and you can see you can see it with your with pans they don't last so long because occasionally uh, the adhesion between there will not be so good and it end up breaking and flaking off what we're trying to do is to try to give materials these hydrophobic properties but we mod modifying them and what, I, what I'm saying by that is if that's for example is that's my surface and see it's, it's aluminium here what I'm trying to do is, how can we implant, how can we change the material here so that I can change the composition there. It stays mostly aluminium, but I change the composition slightly to try and control the properties rather than having to put a layer on top. And this way I don't have this stickiness issue between the coating, the coating and, the, and the material because it's essentially still pretty much the same material. And so that's, the, that's one of the approaches that we're trying to do to try to control the composition of the material um, directly from the material rather than to put something else on top of it. Can you explain like, um, why we're actually interested in manipulating these surfaces? Well, uh, imagine, say, take, take that curve here. Could you imagine a curve that actually doesn't end up having all the all this stickiness around it makes it a lot cleaner, a lot easier to clean, mm. and uh, also a lot more aesthetic. So you, you don't have this what in, in, in the field. This is falling for us. It, it sticks. This is not the purpose of this thing. So people in, in, in looking at that, they've also looked at uh, your toothpaste, mm -hmm. the toothpaste tube, to try and understand and get as much as you can out of the product. Mm. There is this. Uh, you can find it on the internet. This nice video of of, of, of the team from uh, I think it's MIT. They put a super hydrophobic coating inside a ketchup bottle, oh. and, 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 and in one sweep, it empties completely. Wow. So there, So this is the type of thing we can do. So very. So for for everybody's. Um, uh, day-to-day -day usage that's what we can be doing otherwise it's in industry it's really about uh, reducing the amount of time you need to clean systems mm. every time you stop a machine to clean it uh, it's it's basically money thrown out of the window uh, so if we want to and, and and on the other side if you don't do the cleaning it's it's a huge problem a uh, health problem because mm. you can create those those little things here are, are where the, 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 the microbes and bacteria are going to start growing mm. and that's what we try to avoid all that. Well thanks for explaining that Jerome, we really appreciate you coming on Science on the Napkin. Thanks for inviting me.